Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 101 of the Be Yourself and Love It podcast with me, Anthony Samaroff. I'm here with an extraordinarily special guest, Baudry, from I Heal Collective, iHealCollective.com. I don't say this about a lot of people, but I actually consider Baudry to be a role model, uh, not just for me, but like for anyone who's trying to like heal others and have a... The, impact that you and I Heal Collective are having the, on people is absolutely extraordinary. We met here in Mexico, we're in Extapa in Morelia, the Greater Reset 5, um, just, a, just a, a short time ago, yeah. a, week, a week ago or so. And I've been treated by you and I, I've gone, I've done so many different alternative therapies modalities i've learned so much stuff i've been to workshops but i have to say it's been one of the most impactful things one the most impactful sessions i've ever had in my life so much for creating suspense um before we get into that let's um talk a little bit about your story first so we know how you got here because i've not even heard it myself the only thing i know is you told me that you were told that you were going to be in a wheelchair by the age of 35. Um, and I, I, you don't look 35 yet, so uh, <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't count our chickens before we, they're hatched. I'm but, actually 38. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> now everyone out. Yeah, okay. I, I'm 38 too. Interesting. Oh. So, um, but yeah, you're not in a wheelchair. I'm in not. fact, you're in extremely good physical health by yeah. the looks of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Uh, there's some expression in Hebrew when you say something like that, where you say, you know, God willing, that will continue. Um, but w but tell me, how I, I, I've no idea what conditions you had, what happened to you, how did you get there, and how did you find your way out of it? Um, well, I was a competitive snowboarder for a lot of years, and I suffered some pretty horrific injuries. I broke my back in three places. Um, I shattered my elbow, I shattered my collarbone, um, I shattered my wrist, on and on. And for me... I didn't take care of myself even at post-injury the way that I wow. needed to. And it kind of just compiled over time. And, you know, I didn't really share it with the people I was around. I just kind of lived with it and pushed through using right. any methods I could. Um, and then I had such bad foot problems, consequently, that I could barely walk oh. without uh, being in extreme pains. Like, every step was like someone was driving nails for my foot. And then my hands, my joints are actually on the wrong side of my fingers. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, so wow. the specialist told me that they either would want to break all of my fingers to see if that worked, go back into place, or they wanted to uh, pin my joints and try to force my fingers back so and then obviously they scare you um and to a degree i believe them if i didn't do anything mm. you know i probably would have been immobile i was already working my way through that and pushing my way daily through so much so much chronic pain um and it kind of started me out on a journey um it took me first to thailand and I started Thai massage. I started a little bit, of, uh, learned a little bit of reflexology. And then over time, the universe just kind of brought me different practitioners to study from, to learn from. Um, and I wasn't even doing healing full time right. at this point, um, but I was fixing my own body. Because obviously wow. financi wow. financially, yeah, it, you know, exactly. Yeah. So I got myself to a place where, you know, it took a while, but I wasn't in chronic pain every day. Um, and it was a slow, it was slow going for a long time. Um, but yeah, I've been pain free for, I think about seven or eight years. Mm. Um, maybe longer, obviously we're all still straining and using our mm. body and I've mm. done a lot of really hard work, mm. but yeah, now I live in absolutely zero pain. Wow. I'm so pleased for you. Thank you. So I think a lot of the time everything starts in the mind or does it, does it start in the body? Mm. The body is the visible mind and the mind is the invisible body. But what, where do you... Th where do you think you developed or inherited that attitude of like just push through because a mm. lot of us have that and obviously it ends up causing a lot more harm than good because you're not listening to yourself yeah. yeah for me it was a trauma response um i had a very very traumatic childhood mm. and i've been on my own since i was about 16. 
Um, so I just pushed through. I, that's what I did all, all day, every day. Um, mm. And, you know, it kind of was like, oh, what starves you, carves you. You know, mm -hmm. I can just do this, I can do this. But right. I didn't take into account what most people are missing is the spiritual level, right. right? So when you start connecting to the spiritual level, everything else starts working through your body in a very different way. Um, and that's that's its own journey, and spiritualism is different for every person. Um, and working with Asia, actually, um, mm. who's one of our healers, she's amazing, and the spiritual level of that, she definitely took me to different realms beyond the capacity I ever thought I would be at. And did that open your mind to that in a way that you didn't previously believe in before? Yeah, Amazing. absolutely, absolutely. And when I have what I call my energy awakening, when I was able to start to see energy and move energy um, with, with intent through people's bodies, it was actually an uncomfortable process. Everyone right. thinks the awakening is, oh, it's beautiful. And so yeah. it's actually really hard. Um, yeah. And I didn't know how to transmute energies, so I would take those in energies into me, and then you know I would work on someone with a sore knee, and the next day I would have a sore knee. And it almost led me to stop healing after uh. a while. Um, but that was just a reconnection to my spiritual level, knowing that I didn't have to take that on as well, right. and being able so to learn. So there's a lesson in that that you yes, had to learn. Yes, absolutely. And then learning to transmute energies where they pass through instead of going mm. into me and then me carrying them with me, right? Mm. That's kind of some mm. of the weird breathing and stuff that yeah. I do during sessions. Yeah, that's interesting to me because I remember, like, as a counselor, one of my first sessions when I started, where I was like, "This, I don't know if I can handle this," right? Yeah. Um, like the 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 girl had such a traumatic background that I I I didn't show any signs of like can I treat this person or not am I qualified mm -hmm. but inside I kind of seized up and that was the first session where like when she left I felt so tight and kindly my girlfriend took me to the park and we just grounded myself and it went out but that psychologically prepared me for the next session and when she came back I was ready for it and I realized that it was just that tightening up so that it stayed in me right. I was psychologically prepared and to expect what whatever was coming my way and I was able to let it go through and I was like okay I think I can do this job yeah, uh, right. it was Process. a really yeah it's one of my my you know, critical memories of, you know, my development as a therapist. So what I'm wondering is, was it difficult for you psychologically? Was that a travail to kind of let go of the power through and say, actually, I can't power through some things like um, I need to be humbling. emotionally vulnerable? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very, very humbling experience. Um, and I think that if we really look at it, there's such strength and vulnerability. Mm. Um, and that's really where we find our real power, mm. right? And really where people... Oh. Where people... And, and it's really where people kind of miss the block a lot of the time. It's like, you know, being, being strong, being strong is, we have to power, you know, we have to power through this. We can't talk about it. We can't do this. You know, mm. we, don't, we don't cry. We're big, big, mm. you know, grown men don't cry. Yeah. Big boys don't yeah. cry, right? No, it's the opposite, right? Uh -huh. It's just, it's actually experience your emotions, letting them pass through you, and realizing that emotions are really powerful teachers. You know, when we think of anger, anger is just sadness that's gone on too long, mm. right? So, um, you know, mm. it's really learning what their emotions are trying to teach mm -hmm. you. When you're really anxious, well, something's out of control and out of balance in your life. Mm. So what is that, mm -hmm. right? Instead of living our emotions, see what they're trying to teach us, and then we can grow from that. Right. I had an experience um, last year in Mexico around this time where I was having dinner with a friend of mine who's from a different culture, and I just suddenly got triggered in anxiety during the conversation. And I was just like, could you just excuse me for a minute? I'm feeling anxious. I'm going to take a walk around the mm -hmm. block because I know what grounds me. And... Um, that led on to a kind of conversation about that because it was like in my culture, like, you know, you just, you'd be seen, as, you just zip it, hold tight mm -hmm. because you'd be seen as a weirdo. And and that kind of gave me pause for thought as like, you know, is that good? And uh, when you, so um, I guess it's one thing to, you can't like turn on the water hose at any time and just like emote freely in any context, no. in any situation. But there needs to be, spaces that we create for ourselves where we can let the walls down and yeah practices yeah, yeah open up see what's in the box because a lot of the time it whatever it is that you're scared to open the box it's never as bad as this the fear the and that's coming back to anxiety like anxiety is like i don't want to look at this thing because it's mm -hmm. like it might be more than i can handle 
So, yeah, okay. I, I, I'd like to hear... Now, we kind of kept people in the, the dark a bit about what you actually do. So building up to that, like, I'd like to hear about some of your teachers and the modalities that you've learned and the ones that you still use. Have you got any good stories of critical moments in your development um, where you put together the practice that you have? Yeah, you know what? I think a lot of the time we maybe rely too much on the teachers around us. Mm -hmm. It's interesting with body work because there's been very few body workers that I've taken everything from. Mm -hmm. It's like I just pick and choose mm -hmm. what works for me, mm -hmm. right? And they be able to put it together. And that's through kind of trial and error and actually through what I'm working on myself. And I think that if we're not trying on ourselves and our loved ones and seeing where it reaches and goes, that's where we stop with being corrective. You know, right. it just becomes like, you know, it's just, it's just a massage or it's just something like that. It's like, yeah. you know, you have to kind of like advanced reflexology, for right. example, which is, can be extremely painful for the people that don't know. <laughs> it's not a throw I, up. I can attest to that. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's getting to those emotional levels. But I, how can I do that to somebody else if I haven't done that to myself, right? right? Number one, I can't contextualize it for you. Number two, do I know if I'm going to hurt them? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So the, as Correct. much as the teachers were amazing for me, it was the work that I did with myself right. that I really led me there. I so relate to that. I feel like I learned stuff from... But usually what I learned stuff was what I applied to myself. Mm -hmm. And this is why, you know, I spent a lot of time in India, and this is why in the East... The Eastern philosophy, everyone in the West wants a takeaway. Yeah. You ask the guru yeah. for a ta some yeah. information. Exactly. But there was an understanding that information is really trivial and it's better to have one practice and go deep on it than 12 practices that you don't even use. So the emphasis was always on first-hand experience. Yes. Try it out and understand from your own experience. And now, you know, we've got the scientific method and empiricism and all that is useful and has its place. And it's good to have studies. But what we've lost is the understanding that I am an analogous to another human being in some yeah, way. Exactly. And, and you don't know what you know from firsthand experience, you really know. It's not just something that you read in a book somewhere. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I, I don't think you could be such a powerful healer if not for your own extreme experience. And I don't think that I'd be such a good therapist if, if I didn't need good quality attention so much. Right. Uh, you know, it was based on understanding my own needs as a human who'd suffered that I was able to offer that to other people. Well, that's the archetype of the wounded healer, oh, right? right? Okay. The, the archetype of the wounded healer is the people that have gone through it are the most powerful people. Right, um, we're getting union. They walk the darkness that can lead people to the light, right? And, and the complexities behind some of these practices, you know, for me, for me at the end of the day, to get rid of the excess energy uh -huh. that I still haven't transmuted, very simple. I call back all energy that belongs to me, I dismiss all energy that is not, and I will, mm. I will recite that over and over until I feel those excess energies leave. Mm. Like worlds are powerful, mm -hmm. or you know, mm -hmm. the spells, like so all spelling, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, like spelling. the intention behind words and our mm -hmm. breath. It, it's such a simple thing, uh -huh. but it's so, if I don't do it, the next day I'm like, oh, good. Oh, okay. okay. Right? It's cataclysmic for yes. me uh, in a way that I'm like, yeah. okay, now I have to go to do a full clearing. Yeah. Right? Because I've been sitting with those energies all night, sleeping with them, and they've affected me on different levels. It's like, it can be so simple, right? And we're always looking for somebody else to save us. And really what the work I do is I'm just a conduit. Uh -huh. I'm a conduit to be able to take you to that place where you're able to learn to use your intention, your breath work. Obviously I'm doing energy work and you know, mm -hmm. the other skills that I'm doing, mm -hmm. but it's, it's teamwork. I'm not just fixing you, right? right? I, I'm helping you to fix yourself. Yes, and when I was uh, on the operating table, so to speak, <laughs> I felt like we were really, you were really working with me because um, just a, a little about uh, um, one of Baudry's main um, modalities is she'll put pressure on points, or the acupressure points. Or yeah, the reflexology. Reflexology yeah. points. Um, and you know, you don't need to necessarily believe in meridians or nadis as they're called in India, um, but there are, like I was, I, I've got tons of dysfunction in my body. I don't know how, who's tuning in. Maybe you've listened to this um, show before. Uh, one of my teachers in India told me, well, you're, you can't straighten your arms because these muscles here between your shoulder uh, uh, and your, your chest are too long. So that's like one strand. So it's pulling tight. And if you, it's not everyone. So, and so it's interesting in our healing journey how one thing someone says years ago can really 
be contextualized by something someone else teaches you years later, like what I've learned from you. So when you were talking about muscle bands, it really made sense to me based on other teachings I'd had yeah. in previous times in my life. And as we went through the process, I've now had two and a bit sessions for, with you. When you, the more I do, the more I realize, the more I tune into the pain when you put extreme pressure in, the more conscious the, the it's like I don't even know I'm holding the tension, but you put pain on me and after a while I start to feel shit that muscle is really tight yeah. and that's been going from the unconscious to the conscious and just like sort of Freud said and in, in the psychotherapeutic realm we're taking it out of the conscious mm -hmm. unconscious to make it conscious suddenly I realize how tight my muscle is and that's a few seconds before the tension um subsides and I've had such tense hamstrings my whole life. We, I'm seeing you now. I saw you maybe eight or nine days ago as well. Just today versus last week is like they're tremendously mm. years of yoga, years of yoga never achieved what you've done for me in a couple of sessions. Well, well it can't because it's mechanics, right? And right. When we think of go to massage therapists, they're treating a tendon, muscle, and ligament. They're not treating the pathway of tension. Right. And the pathway of tension, how it moves through the body, is what you need to treat at the fundamental levels. It all starts in the hands, the feet, and moves up the body. Uh -huh. So if you can understand the pathways of tension, uh, and Brandon Rayner was a great, was a great mm -hmm. one to the, put these pathways uh, kind mm -hmm. of into the massage world. Um, and we, what, what an amazing, it's, if you can find a Rayner therapist, it's foundational. And I do more than that, but that has been a big, big influence on my yes. life. And once you start to relieve, you know, you take a bam, put tension in it, pull it tight. And then we think like, oh, I got an injury. It's like you had an injury, even though the impact, you know, it's, you slipped and fell. But it was as bad as it was because the residual tension was built up. And you actually have a lot. I know. I have yeah. an extreme amount. Extreme you amount. said in my ankles, it was like treating a 60 year old. Yeah, yeah, you have the amount of tension that's in your feet, I don't usually see um, to someone that's under 60. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like your feet were like cement when we first started yeah, moving. And there's layers to these things. You, people can only take so much in a session, right? We're not here to traumatize you. We have to meet people where they're at. Re-traumatize. Re-traumatize, exactly. And that's why we have safe words yeah. <laughs> and, we, and pain levels. And we coach people through it as well. But when people, it's about changing the relationship to pain, right? right? Everyone's so scared of pain in this life. And it's like, you're only in that amount of pain because you ignored your body as long Same. as you did, right? So it's like, Re it's, it's like it's like cut your finger to put peroxide yeah. on it, right? That, yeah. that stinging, you know it's cleaning, it's cleaning infection. Right. Same kind of thing. And it's yeah. funny because I'll have the weight of a pencil on someone sometimes and they're just like, ah, it's like you're driving a hot poker through me. And it's like, I get it because I yeah. felt it myself. Yeah. But if it's that bad because we have done that much damage right. to our bodies. And that yes. starts at our emotional level too. Exactly. All of this we carry down to our cellular DNA. Right. And the physical, mental, spiritual impact the physical body every day, right? And our physical body pays for it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And as a counselor, it's the same principle. I'm trying to get the client, go where the pain is. Yeah, don't, exactly. Don't, don't, don't walk around the edge. And sometimes if I listen to someone, I can hear what they're walking to the edge, around the edge of, and I'll try and say, well, it sounds like you feel like this because this, and it's like, right. boom, yes, okay. You need to put the finger on the, like the tension band, yes. okay. I feel the weight. <laughs> oh, I feel the weight come off them when it's recognized. So it's it's really extremely interesting what you're saying because some of what you're saying, I came to the conclusion myself, but I wasn't able to put it in the language that you did because I was sick of being so unphysical, which is why I went to yoga retreats. I thought I've gone to psychotherapy, I've done trauma release mm -hmm. exercises, I've done, I've gone to so many workshops counseling, everything. The one thing I've not done is get into my body. And I mm -hmm. carried my body around like a sack of potatoes for 30 years. So I thought I'm never gonna be able to do it in installments. I need to kick the door in. So I went to India and I did my first yoga retreat. It was a nightmare. Four hours of asana practice, two, maybe two, two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon. Um, and I was not fit, I was not, um, flexible and I was not strong. If I'd known what I was in for, I would have gone to the gym beforehand to, to work on my cardio so that I wouldn't run out of breath so quick. But it did kick the door in and the second one I went to, I was absolutely able to enjoy a bit and now I really like it, even though I'll never be, there'll always be people who come in who are more flexible than me, even if they've never done yoga before, because yeah. that's their body and that's my body. Right. But now I'm much, the main effect it had was on the mind. Exactly. Which is now I'm not going, oh, 
crap, how long is this going to go on for? How long do I have to go, go hold this pose? Mm -hmm. I actually feel into it and I start to enjoy it and I don't push too hard. Because what I realized was, like everything else, like you when you were young, I was like, just kick the exactly. shit out of this posture, like just push into, and I was, what I realized was it was too much brute force. Yeah. And it took me a few years to realize, yeah. but I needed to be really gentle with myself. So sometimes when I do my own yoga practice, I'll literally just put my hands behind my head and pull my elbows back and I'll feel into where the tension is and I'll slightly stretch and I'll hold that pose for four minutes. But God, do I feel like so much relief from right. it. Right, and you're it's not like, overdoing That's what I tell you in yeah, class. Exactly. So like meet yourself where you're at and that. But for the ideal way to do that would be to get the tension out of your body and then condition your body and get more limber that way mm -hmm. because there's people that have been going to yoga for 20 years that have never had any more flexibility than when they started because yeah. the problem is in the tension in their body right, and exactly. although yoga is going to stretch it out but if you don't have anything to stretch because everything's uh -huh. pulled tight yeah. you're not going to get anywhere but it's still going to be very good for the breath work for the it's, mind there's for, lots of yeah, benefits yeah, to it but I think what people don't understand was yoga was originally des designed to be developmental yes. not remedial exactly. and people are using they, yoga 100%. As a remedial modality, yeah. like I was trying to yeah. do, and they when what they really need was physiotherapy mm. because you're talking about a, a system that was designed for a population that sat cross-legged to eat that worked above their heads exactly. our legs are the muscles in our legs are shortened we we can't work above our head we can't squat mm -hmm. so that this means that Actually, when you have a natural body, you can use yoga to build and build and build on that. But um, some, like I fell into the trap of thinking this was what was going to um, heal me when really I needed various types of physiotherapy, osteopathy, maybe chiropractic. I learned a lot from a lot of different people mm -hmm. to actually bring me up to the level. Well, I actually wish I'd known about what <laughs> you were doing back then. Because right. what I can say is in two sessions... I've years, you've reversed years of tension in my body. Yeah, it doesn't take long. It's painful, but it doesn't take long. And it's, it's all, it's all it is painful. It is painful. And it's all about the order you do it in, right? So it's like like chiropractor, let's say chiro. Yeah. Bones don't move muscles, muscles right. move bones. Right. So the, you have to go bone cup chiropractor back yeah. again and again and again. Yeah, exactly. The tension bands will just exactly. pull everything back out again. So w within my clinic, they'll come see mixed modality healers and we're not we're not just advanced reflexology and rainer we do uh, sound and vibrational healing we do cupping we do lymphatic drainage we do all sorts of things um and then after that at the very end of the session you go to the chiropractor they put everything back in again yeah, and sometimes you don't even need to, to sometimes it. just with this attention things shift back into place right, right? so it's very yeah. interesting it's all in the right yeah. order you do it in. and there's no there has been a guidebook for this and I, I don't blame doctors uh, yeah. in a lot of sense. Allopathic medicine, you know, they're they're training big pharma. Uh -huh. even, there's good physiotherapists, there's bad physiotherapists. Yeah, exactly. but the fundamentals of what most physio know are really fall short of uh, what they actually need. Exactly. Osteopaths, not always. There's some yeah. great osteopaths out there. And, you know, even Bowen therapy, I mean, they don't understand the fundamentals of it, but mm -hmm. they, they're using the tension bands and just gentle yeah. pulling to release tension. It's not going to get you very far very quickly, but you see other therapies out there kind of starting to understand it. They just haven't put it together. We're still in the dark ages with this yeah, stuff. Yeah, and then we get expert syndrome because, like, this is what I do. I'm a chiropractor. I'm this and this. Yeah. And it's like, well, every person needs a slightly different treatment. You know, you have to tailor it to their individual chemistries yeah. and their biochemistries and their individual traumas. And right. unless you do that, you're just treating people like a number and a piece of meat. It's like five minutes here, five minutes here. It's like, no, they're here to see this. We, we fix that from the fundamentals and the right. root of the condition all the way it up. It seems like you really are. I mean, I, I learned a lot from a lot of different people, but I think I had a good chiropractor because he said, you don't want to mess, uh, build muscle around a damaged unit. Correct. You want to get it in the right place yeah. first and then build the muscle around it. So I'd like to know about, since you said you learned from healing yourself, what that looked like, what, what practices <laughs> you had done on you and what you drew from that. Yeah, for me, learning how to condition my body, um, so I, was a, I was a competitive snowboarder, but it didn't mean I did a very good job of taking care of my body mm -hmm. before that. I was just going on sheer grit and uh, I guess a little bit of talent and how much I was doing it. So I was in Thailand uh, um, and I started to do Muay Thai, right? So I started to condition my feet, walk in mm. the ground, ground myself, start to feel how that kind of felt. Um, and then, for, you know, and, and then obviously taking things back to nature, the elements are huge um, and working within your inner childhood traumas and all of these things were really uh, effective. But for honestly, sitting in bed every day um, and torturing myself 
and really getting to the root of that and getting to know what pain was and what you know what was good pain, what was bad pain, mm. and how far I kind of take myself. Um, a couple years back, actually, I was doing aerial yoga with a friend, and they dropped me. She slipped. Oh shit! It's okay. I tore a bunch of tendons and ligaments in my in my foot, um, and they told me I'd be in crutches for six weeks and I would be on a cane for probably four weeks after. So I spent a week and a half to two weeks in bed just doing yeah. reflexology, rainer, and using a you know just release even my fashion yeah. gun, and I was. About a week and a half of not being able to walk very well, limping around the house, hopping on a crutch. And then by two weeks, not a problem. Amazing. Yeah. It's amazing what you can do when you have the know-how. Like, people just don't have the information. Yes. Um, which is why what you're doing is so important. Um, also, as an educator, as well as a practitioner, I mean, I'm so glad that I come into contact with you and can assimilate some of what you've learned. Um, but... Yeah, it's like that. Uh, what, what it reminded me of is like Bruce Lee, you know, he had an injury and he went in bed and that's where he did. He got really into philosophy and did his dissertation or whatever, mm -hmm. if I can remember correctly. Yeah. So there was this yeah, idea in the past that you, can't, that you can't just approach things from the mind. You have to really get into the body. And it's so interesting, the contemporary view of a philosopher as someone with glasses and a weedy guy like me probably smoking roll-up cigarettes outside the philosophy department. <laughs> but you know, uh, Socrates, Aristotle and Plato were built as fuck because in those days they thought you went to the gymnasium, you know, they, they thought if you were going to have a, if you're going to be a philosopher, you should be in like good health and exercise. Mm. And um, this, the, our, 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 world is a lot occupied by information, not first-hand experience. Right, we have a lot of people living in their mental bodies, right. their mental minds. Um, yeah, so many, and I, I think that really, that's one of the biggest obstacles, actually, of getting people to understand how to conceptualize and deal with their pain, is because mm -hmm. there's so much in the mental body about it, and you know, and we, we kind of take it into the emotional, spiritual body, it's like, the pain that you're feeling that I'm, you know, quote unquote, maybe causing you, um, because of what I'm trying to do to release tension, isn't all physical pain. Right. It's, an emo it's definitely emotional. Super I felt so emotional. emotional. There was something you put into my back, which, you know, a year prior, I'd got my friend who's like, who is a gym, uh, you know, gym goer, like very muscular. I was just like, just fucking put your elbow into that, into that knot, please. Mm -hmm. And like, when he was going at me, I was like, oh my God, oh, yeah. like that. I was like, I was amazed at how emotional it was. It was mm -hmm. so odd. And, and I felt, experienced the same when you worked on my back. Like, yeah. and, and at various points it felt emotional. And I'm saying like, mother, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's well, like, it's so. Definitely. And because when you're thinking you're back and there's I'm working at, we hold emotions in our organs, right? right? We hold fear and fright in our kidneys. We hold worry in our stomachs. We hold anxiety in our lungs. We hold all these things in these different places. So when you're actually, when I'm in the foot or the hand or in the back, so, you know, around the kidneys wow. there, I'm starting to release things in different areas. Anything, people laugh, cry, scream, swear at me. And I, all of these things are okay because it's not about me. It's about what they need to release when they need to go, yeah. go up. We don't have a lot of practices generally of how to release our emotions. Uh -huh. um, and that's why we get, you know, the anger, especially. Uh -huh. That men, can, especially because mm -hmm. you guys have been taught to repress anger mm -hmm. for so long, mm -hmm. so much in your life, and it comes out in angry bursts mm -hmm. in, in areas that you're like, oh, I didn't mm -hmm. mean to, why, why am I that angry mm -hmm. about this? It's because you've been conditioned, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, what do you do to release your emotions? Whether, you know, for me, I love a good car scream, mm -hmm. you know, ah, get in the car, mm -hmm. you know, or you know, go yell at the moon, whatever mm -hmm. you need to do, laugh, cry, get it out of you, mm -hmm. right? They're meant to pass through you, they're not meant to live with you forever. Yeah. I think there's a, a real thing about going into it, but uh, what, what I always suggest is that people have like their certain ways of resourcing themselves because you don't want to get, you don't want to get so, like w when I'm dealing with people who have had severe trauma, which isn't always a lot, mm -hmm. um, it's like, I don't, like you say, you work with a pain system. You're like, if you get to eight in pain, that's fine. But if it exceeds that into nine or 10, tell me to stop. Mm -hmm. And it's the same. I don't want people to feel completely out of control. Yes. And then you you can have things like what, whatever works for you in terms of your control of your breath, affirmations, and people from your life or that you hold as aspiration aspirational that you can see mm -hmm. is with you to hold your hand and bring you back down so that you can bring the negative emotion the unpleasant yeah. emotion into your calmness right. so that you and, and you can hold space for the it sacred so space not, you yeah, create so you create the space mm -hmm. where you feel safe to explore and and, yeah. and, and start pulling out the net 
And, and, and I think that's very analogous because you're, you've got such a great bedside manner. I think people feel safe to be in physical and emotional pain with you. Well, thank you. And actually, the Greater Reset was a perfect uh, perfect example of someone like opening a sacred yeah. space there. You know, you wouldn't think, too, like myself in Asia doing yeah. body work in front of a convention center. It, yeah. it was a bit weird the first year. And I was people like, people are walking by. And, and yeah, and they're having emotional releases. And I was like, this is going to no be uncomfortable minds. for them and maybe slightly uncomfortable for me. But like, I get into a zone, so I'm not really present or don't really kind of see what's going on. But everyone there held so much space yeah. for everyone else. They were like, yeah, get it out. Yeah, and I was like, I'm like yeah, no one yeah. else is going to want a treatment when they hear this stuff because people no, no, really no. release. And it was people the exact understand. opposite. They were like, yeah. me next, me next. And they so were like a 37 person wait list. It was so good. Day. And I'm so pleased for your success because what you're doing is of extreme importance. Like, just so people know, we, she had a table outside in the um, plaza in front of the conference center. So people were coming in and out, people were going shopping, people from the conference center. And she's like putting extreme pressure into people's toes and fingers. And people are like screaming for dear life because they're having these uh, releases from their muscles. It feels physically painful, it feels emotional. And people are just walking by like nothing's happening. Yeah. Sometimes they're like, yeah, you go girl. Like, yeah, they or, understand. Or they run over and like- And they say, encourage them. Exactly, and you say extreme pressure and sometimes I have the weight of a pencil on somebody, you're just but in the right it spot. Feels so. It feels like that, but they run over and be like, what's going on here? Yeah. Sign me yeah, up, they and I'm like, Really? They want to know. They want to get into yeah. They're like, if they're having that extreme reaction, <laughs> I want to experience this that. too. Yeah. And, and, and it's very interesting because earlier on you said something like, you could say the pain that I'm putting on to you. But what actually, we, what is, is the stored pain? It's the stored mm -hmm. pain from not paying attention to your body exactly. sooner exactly. and not having the... So you, what you're doing is essentially opening the door to someone feeling something that they've got stored so they can finally move through it and release it. Exactly, and then release all the tension the entire way up through the body, you know? It, it, and this is the difference between a treatment and a corrective therapy. You know, we are treating people that, so they don't have to get hip replacements anymore, knee replacements anymore. I know, it's incredible. It, well, and, and it's mostly just mechanics, actually. Once yeah. you understand the fundamentals, don't get me wrong, there is an emotional and spiritual uh, mental component to all of this. But if even you just look at the basic mechanics behind things, when we think of injury, for example, someone's like, oh, I slipped and fell and I broke my ankle. And it's like, well, you broke your ankle because you had that much yes. tension there. Yeah. If your ankle was released, you yes. might have sprained it. You might have just might, rolled yeah, it. Just but the severity over. of yeah. what's happening to you is because of the tension too in much the body. Tension. Thank yeah. you so much. So yeah, I mean, you can use my right wrist uh, as an example. By the mm. way, guys, it's not what you think. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know. I had, I was starting to get, I was starting to freak out, quite frankly, because, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a writer as well as a counselor, every, I, and I run an online business, and, like, I'm getting repetitive strain injury in my wrists from using my phone, from using my laptop, yeah. and I'm going, like, freaking out. I'm so glad I met you. Um, to, but this could have progressed to something worse. Yeah. So if you use that as an example, that will get the point across. Yeah, you were really, really locked up in your wrist um, and not too far away from nerve uh, nerve damage. Yeah, so, and yeah, yeah, and yeah, 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 eventually what would have happened... It would have got worse. It would have got worse, but it would have happened to turn into what we call carpal tunnel and tennis elbow. These right. are actually the same thing. It's just tension mm -hmm. band issues. And from there, it would have come up your arm and probably pulled your rotator cuff out, then you uh -huh. have a shoulder injury, and then right into your top of your back and right. your shoulders, which you're probably already feeling the top of your shoulders. Right. That runs all the way up to the head, your tension band. So. It's kind of this cataclysmic thing. It starts here, uh -huh. and if you don't, if you start to feel tingling in your fingers, yeah. those kinds of things, you're like, okay, that's the number you need to get on that. Because mm -hmm. if you don't and you continue to ignore that, this is where the bad arthritis comes from. You know, right. these big knobby knuckles that people have. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a condition. It's hereditary. No, it's not. Uh -huh. No, if you keep your joints open. For right. me, they told me, you know, my hands were starting to freeze up in my mid twenties. Uh -huh. I could barely pick anything up, and I was oh, like, oh wow, my goodness. I'm so sorry. Well, yeah, but now I have yeah. more strength in my fingers than doing the work that had... I do than I ever had before, right. and potentially more strength than most people have just because Correct. of the way it's ways. But because I can keep my joints open. Right. And I know how to do that. So if we, it, it, just don't ignore your pains in your body. And if you can't find someone, come see us. We have therapies, therapists all uh -huh. over as well. Or, uh -huh. you know, we have, we're going to have online courses for self Yes, uh, we're going to speak about yeah, that You can do so much of your own work if right. you want to have the education. And that's part of the issue with health is they almost have this cult-like shield to knowledge that it's like, no, we protect this. It's like with I Heal Collective, our job is to heal, but it's to educate, educate. you on how to heal yourself. Like, there's so much work that you can do. 
And you know, you, you're working with people with therapy. They're doing so much work on their inner and yeah. their mental minds, their emotional minds. Yeah. It's like bringing that together with the physical, right? Uh, exactly. And uh, and I'm very into yeah. Like again, I think there are modes of talk therapy that can go nowhere because it's just True. like a, a circle. Yeah. But it doesn't need to be like that. And I've assimilated everything I've known. Um, but yeah, I, I guess, I, so the thing is, I've worked a lot, like I had severe digestive issues, which I, th and, and prior to that, like depression, and anxiety, which I think were probably related. So a lot of my healing was to do with like detoxification of the mm -hmm. body. And I learned a lot of, you know, I've done three week water fasts twice, wow. two weeks once, 11 days. Uh, and it was of extreme benefit. I've done like juice cleanses and all this stuff. Uh, but I learned a lot about it from my teachers. And one thing, a lot of stuff can be healed by detoxification of the body. Mm -hmm. But one thing I always learned was nerve damage. That's the most difficult. So now nerve damage can be so, yeah, when, when nerves are dead, nerves are dead. Right. Um, nerve damage can be reversed. Mm -hmm. um, and this is part of the other side of my, my company, my business is like, well, as much as we're working on these parts of the bodies uh, on these levels with treatment, we're also working with like within like, say Brown's gas, where right. you're putting what you made up back into your body because you yeah. can regenerate. Yes. Once a nerve is dead, there's not much you can yeah, do. Exactly. But so, you can reverse these things. But the earlier that you do this, my point exactly. the easier and faster it's going to happen because nerves heal so painfully slow. I severed a femoral nerve once mm -hmm. and it was like, you know, electrical pain shooting oh, down my man. legs for two years. Um, yeah, it wasn't great. <laughs> I'm okay. fine now though. Um, but it's the understanding of, you know, and it's so funny when you get someone's medicine cabinet or their nutraceuticals, they have 5 million nutraceuticals. And it's like, that's 2% of your body. Right. What about the other 98% of it, uh -huh. right? 86% of that is hydrogen and oxygen. Right. Let's find a way, like Brown's gas, or we have amazing machines on our site, yeah. that put that back into you. The easiest way to get healthy, you're breathing gas and drinking water, right? right. 12% carbon, right. carbon 60. Put what you're made of back in your body, yeah, and especially exactly. the biggest parts of that first. You drank you, probably two massive glasses of Brown's gas water today. Right. You say you drink a lot of water anyway, but that stuff just goes down so smooth because right. your body yeah, wants no. it. And it's it's structured properly as well. Totally. Learn to listen to your body, not your mental mind, your physical yeah. body, and what it wants you to put into it. Exactly. You or know, not. you need to give your body the bricks and mortar to. If you build healthy cells, you yeah. build healthy tissues. If you build yeah. healthy tissues, healthy organs. If you build healthy organs, Absolutely. you'll build a healthy body. Um, and so you need to give the, the, the body the building blocks it requires to, because you get a new cell generation every day, every, but you get a new one, not necessarily a better one. That's up mm. to you. So I have a, you're already doing extremely well, but it seems to me like by next year, Baudry is going to be as big as Queen, the band. <laughs> Also the head of state, uh, maybe uh, Led Zeppelin, whoever you, whoever you like. Um, so there, but there's only one Baudry and there's mm. desperate need for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So what I want to know is, I want to know about your educational courses because we don't have the technology to clone you yet. Not yet. And, and, even if we did, each clone would want to go off and do its own thing, no doubt. <laughs> but you could form a band and, and right? maybe get as big as Queen. They have to be better singers so, than me, though. Yeah, uh, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, so you, you don't want a clone of you that's going to fight you for creative control. No, I want to train people that are better than me. Exactly. And I think that's the right uh, the attitude of any educator is like, I want to make myself, um, you know, on the script, I just want yeah. to be one of, the, one of the people. But yeah. right now, and you know, if we look at it, there's a massive percent of our population is about to age out, and with uh -huh. with, with aging out, we come comes health problems. Uh -huh. It just does. So there is not enough of us, um, mm -hmm. even population wise, to be able to handle that. So then take that down to how many people are doing proper healing and working within that spectrum. It's very small. So this is probably the fastest growing industry in the world, I would say, of what's going to be desperately needed. Mm -hmm. So we had to find a way um, to start educating people. Um, a lot quicker than I had potentially started to do it. Um, uh -huh. So for us, a self-reflexology course we're gonna have online where you can actually learn, you'll, you'll follow yourself, you know, we'll do a video and we'll torture ourselves together. Mm. Um, where you can follow me and we can do the fundamentals of that. Um, if you can't maybe afford to get uh, to a right real practitioner or you know, you're maybe not in the right um, location that you can't find anyone to help, at least it gives you the fundamentals mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And then we're also doing two training courses this year uh, for mixed modality. Mm -hmm. And mixed modality uh, are what I do every day was an advanced reflexology, um, an introduction to deep tissue and Rainer. 
Um, and then we do sound and vibrational healing. We do cupping. We do lymphatic drainage. And then we also teach you about ozone therapy a little bit and about Brown's gas therapy and how to integrate these mm -hmm. things into an actual practice. Amazing. Yeah. So we'll be doing one of those in April. And then we do another one this fall that, that's yet to be announced exactly. And then we're also doing live blood courses with Dr. Ross Anderson. And Dr. Ross Anderson is one of my mentors. Um, and he's absolutely amazing. The guy had cancer three times, cured himself all three amazing. times. Amazing. And I'm talking throat cancer tw twice, brain mm -hmm. cancer once. These Whoa, were serious crazy. things. And he's also done more live blood exams than I probably anyone in the world, over 7,000 of them. And he has a very interesting process of how to mm -hmm. do that. And live blood mm -hmm. microscopy is the universe inside. It's a way to see mm -hmm. your blood. In, mm -hmm. in, in not conventional blood tests don't find everything. Mm -hmm. Live blood is amazing in the way that it does mm -hmm. that. And we need, especially with what's happening with the lollipops, right. yeah. we need more people seeing what's going on. You know, the, yeah. the blood that sustains us all, yeah. it's so important. You know, you're able to detect nutritional imbalances and all these other things. So he's doing a course in March. Um, come to our website, I Heal Collective, for the dates. But we need an army of healers yes. right now. We really do. Yes. And we need an army of people like you doing mm. the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you are a healer. You are mm -hmm. a light worker. You're, you mm -hmm. are working in the emotional and mental mm -hmm. bodies. Those are two That's very right. important parts. You can't just yeah. work on the physical and spiritual. And not everyone can do everything, no. but everyone can do something. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And, you know, we have all sorts of research and development teams. Um, and, you know, there's so many light workers being called right now that just don't know what to do. Dude, well, that's the thing. You've shown, and I said this um, when I was at the conference to my girlfriend and some friends of mine. I was like, what you're doing with I Heal Collective is very inspiring because I can see you're doing it. It's out of the box. So mm. if, if I wanted to do something similar in the UK, if I go back to the UK for a long extended time, you've already... It's like the per the first person to run the four minute mile. Mm -hmm. You told me it took a bunch of years, yeah. right? And you're probably thinking all those years when you had tons of time, why didn't I have clients? Why didn't I? Why, why? But you, you knew maybe that someday people would be scratching down your door and they ought to be. Interestingly enough, no, I honestly didn't think at the beginning I would ever do healing full time. Oh, that's right. you yeah, that. I was doing other jobs and it was always a part time thing for me yeah. until the universe kind of made that not possible. It right. just kind of redirects you and redirects you until this is what you're doing. It's like, okay, I surrender. This is my gift. This yeah. is what I need to do. Um, and we need this to be global. You know, yes. I actually have a year in talking, you're in the UK. I have a healer in the UK, yes. Alice Bush. She's amazing. And the thing is, we really. We make we do small classes because uh -huh. my our success is determined by our students and ha and how good they are. I, mm -hmm. I'm not into just getting a class of 50 people, teaching them for 10 days yeah, and throwing them out in the world. There's a lot of stuff like that. It's, it's so much. And mixed money. modality also isn't for everybody. You know, I really prefer the people that come from mixed modality at least have an understanding of how the human body works. Right. Maybe have to have worked in customer service, right. work with people, have worked with touching people. And, and if they haven't, then we usually start them with the Rainer courses that Karina right. runs, which is, you know, that gives you the fundamentals of how to do it. So there's really something for everybody. Right. And if people are looking for a way to make a contribution, you've got a bunch of stuff that you've shown to work. You've mm -hmm. got the most incredible testimonials from people who have reversed diseases. Some of them were told they were incurable. And um, I'm sure people can find those testimonials mm -hmm. on your, on I, iHealCollective.com. So... If, like you say, we need an army of healers, yeah. you know, it's like they've they've got armies to make war. Yeah. They've got armies of pharma reps to sell drugs. Yeah. And we need, uh, we need an army. So if you want to make a difference, but, mm -hmm. oh, I don't know if I should try this because it might not work. And uh, why reinvent the wheel? You've got tried and tested modalities mm -hmm. here. And, you know, in a year, who knows how long, you could be making an, the most incredible contribution. So I strongly recommend anyone listening who has even a, a glimmer of maybe that might be for me, start with one of Baudry's courses, start with one of I Heal Collective's courses, check it out, try it out, do it, learn something, and, and, and it will inform you if you like what you're experiencing will open a door yeah. to, to more. So And contact us too. I'm not one of these people just like, oh, buy a course. It's like, yeah. I, I'm pretty accessible that way. If you uh -huh. want to talk about how you want to implement this in your future, mm -hmm. talk to me because maybe it's the right thing for you. Maybe it's something different. Um, we're not just here to sell courses and take money and just crank out another massage therapist. Yeah, I'm not, inter your, I, I'm not interested your, in that. Yeah, really it's your not. face. One needs to take pride in what yeah. they do. I wouldn't like to go around licensing people when they weren't up to scratch because that right. reflects badly on me you know 
I don't like to take money from people I can't help. Mm -mm. If I think I can't help someone, I recommend them another therapist. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's and part that's of what we do is the triage. Ethos. Exactly, yeah. the triage thing. We have, we have practitioners that are traditional Chinese medicine doctors that do all sorts of things. So when they come to me, if I'm the right practitioner for them, perfect. If I'm not, maybe that's energetically too. Not everyone's everyone's cup of tea. I've got a team. Yeah. And I say, okay, you need to go see you know, my traditional Chinese medicine doctor or you need to go see Asia for some spiritual work first or I, we triage you or Dr. Ross Hander for mm -hmm. some, some live mm -hmm. blood or some ozone mm -hmm. therapy because I'm busy. And then you find the right healers for you. And maybe if you try someone, they're not right for you, we pivot and we find someone yeah. that is. They're, they're not stuck in this paradigm of box. Because I've heard so many people that they're massage therapists or their insurance pay for the chiropractor, like, oh, I can't stand that guy. I'm yeah, like, I know. why are you letting him yeah. work on you? You yeah, know, exactly. like, stop that. It's like yeah. you have to find people that you align with because right. there's a deeper connection when it comes to, you know, being Correct. on the table, there's a deeper connection between us mm -hmm. than just that surface level stuff. Absolutely. Uh, it's crazy to think about it, but some people don't actually like us. Can you believe that? But that's fine because there's enough to go around. Most people don't like me during treatment. <laughs> <There's> no, <right. laughs> they like me after. <laughs> yeah, there's no uh, there's no shortage of potential clients. The only thing that is, no. that's running short in this world is integrity. So yes. I'm glad that you're bringing that back. Baudria, anything else to add? People can find you at iHealCollective.com. Yep, we're on all, all socials as well. Um, we are going to Anarchapoco, um, and I hope you're coming too. We're trying ah, to get might, him to come. I might sneak down in yeah. February. Yeah, Anarchapoco, different than the Greater Reset. Going down in Anarchapoco. Yeah, there you go. It's a little bit different than the Greater Reset. It's more kind of a beach event. It's quite relaxed. Um, not that Greater Reset wasn't, but it's it, just a different dynamic. Um, we love both conferences every year, um, so we're really excited to go down there and really you know, get to see what happened with Acapulco, the hurricane, put some money back into mm -hmm. the community yes, and the people exactly. there, which I think is incredibly important. Goes a long important. way. Goes a huge way. So we're really looking forward to doing that. And then after conventions are done, we're going to for a little bit and then get Trump. right into the courses. Um, and then, you know, the, the interesting thing too is a lot of people are like, okay, I can't fly to Mexico to come see you. What communities are starting to do is they'll mm -hmm. get five or six people that need treatment together yeah. in their community yeah. and fly and us to exactly them. Then they can split the accommodations, they can split the, the transportation and the issues of that. And if we are available, um, we do do that. We'll come mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's mm -hmm. generally a little bit more affordable. Um, and sometimes people like to be in their own um, space yeah. for healing as well. Although yeah. I think Mexico is also amazing yeah, to come here. It's lovely to come here if you can. But if you can, but some people can't. Yeah. So we're really, really to work with people because we, you know, obviously we have to, you know, do what's right for us in our own lives and our own agendas. Um, but at the same time, we want to work with you because we're in this for the right reasons. That's right. Yeah. Yes. We're bringing back the light. It's been too dark for too yeah. long. Baudre, thank you so much for joining me and Be thank Yourself you so and Love It. Thank you so much for having me. And it was an absolute podcast. pleasure to meet you and treat you. Oh, I'll tell thank you what. You. And you are an inspiration yourself. Oh, well, no, that's you very are. kind of you to say. Um, iHealCollective.com, uh, Be Yourself and Love It.com. Mm -hmm. And you guys at home, be yourself. But don't yeah. just be yourself. Be yourself and love it.